following program is recorded content created by the Truth Network. It's Matt Slick Live. Matt is the founder and president of the Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, found online at CARM.org. When you have questions about Bible doctrines, turn to Matt Slick Live for answers. Taking your calls and responding to your questions. Hello. Uh, welcome, welcome to Matt Slick Live. Here's Matt Slick. Uh, glad to have you here with us. I'm sitting in for Matt Slick. Uh, if you um, uh, don't know, he's on a... Uh, a tour to the Holy Land. He's finishing up and should be back, Lord willing, uh, this coming Monday. And I expect some uh, praise reports and some uh, interesting uh, comments from him on his experience over there. Uh, so Matt Slick Live will be live with Matt Slick next Monday, but today it's Charlie Spine sitting in for Matt. Glad to have you here. Our show is uh, caller-driven as far as the topics go. So let me give you the uh, the date today for the podcasters that might be watching later. Today's Thursday, March 2nd, 2023. And if you're listening to us live or watching live, you can call us with your question at 877-207-2276. That's a toll-free number, 877-207-2276. Uh, we uh, appreciate your calls and look forward to them. In fact, there's a call on the on the line right now, in from Alex. And Alex, you're on the air. You got me. Yeah, I got you, Charlie. How you doing? Oh, good. You're sounding well. Let's let's. Uh, what's your question on here? Oh, uh, yeah. Before I get my question, I appreciate you guys' prayers. I just got back from Costa Rica. Oh my! What were you doing down there? Uh, I was visiting a friend, and then I also visited a few pastors down there. Man, a lot of cults down there. Oh, indeed, yes, indeed, and some old established ones as well. Yep. Yeah. So I, I was ashamed I couldn't get to call in sooner. I wanted to call when you were hosting the show, but I'm glad I got through today. So. Oh, good. So what's your question today? Uh, um, so when I was down there, I was speaking to a pastor, and he was telling me how there's a, some of these landmark Baptist churches. Um, I guess they believe they came from John the Baptist, and they're the only true church. And it's kind of like a cult-like group. I, I was wondering if you knew anything about the landmark Baptists. Uh, no, I, 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 I see that there's one, uh, uh, let's see, I see you're calling from Florida. I see there's ones in Haines City, Florida, but I really don't know, uh, much about them. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, they're new to me and I'd have to study their statement of faith and their mission statement to really give you a, uh, an accurate answer, but at this point, I really don't know uh, much about them at all. Um, okay. But if, as you're uh, reporting well, maybe... to me, if if yeah, if you're reporting to me that they believe they're the only uh, uh, legitimate church, you know, right from John the Baptist, the the Baptists do have a history of tracing their apostolic uh, line all the way to John the Baptist. They've they've made it made a case for it. Not too many people have given it a lot of weight. Um, some have, you know, and and believe it wholeheartedly, and others uh, say, well, you know, it's 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 a nice idea. But sometimes a nice idea gets beaten up by a bunch of brutal facts. So it's it, it'd be interesting to study more. But to tell you the truth, I, I can't honestly give you a, a, an answer one way or the other about the ministry. Oh, that, I mean, that's OK, brother. Um, my uh, the only thing I do know about them, too, is I guess they uh, something with the trail of blood or the trail of tears. Does that ring a bell? It does. Uh, I, I read a blurb about them uh, 40 years ago, and it would be unfair for me to try upon, draw upon that memory <laughs> to give you an answer. Um, but I, 
I'm going to put it on our list, and I'm going to put it on Matt's list. If it's something he, I don't see that he's got an article about it online. Uh, normally he does. Uh, sometimes when he's on the air and a topic is brought up, I'll stick a link into an article. And he's written so many thousands of articles. It um, it gives me a giggle when he says, oh, oh, I forgot. I did write an article about that a long time ago. And yeah. uh, so I kind of I'd kind of tease him about that, but I don't find that among his articles at this point. And uh, but it's definitely um, a group that uh, if if they're making those claims, it's it's uh, it would be healthy for us to see why they make those claims, and if they hold up or if they uh, leak. Um, maybe when we meet someone from that ministry, we can minister to them and uh, guide them in a more correct direction if they are, respect Scripture as the Word of God. And that's always a, a good starting point. And uh, the next point is if they'll listen to that Word of God and adjust themselves accordingly. I've um, often commented that my adjustments to the Word of God are sometimes uncomfortable, but nevertheless, I know my responsibility is to uh, stick with what He says the way He says it, no matter how uncomfortable it'll be, and I'll be blessed in the end is uh, is my expectation. So if we guide them in that fashion, and uh, if you study more about them, uh, uh, please uh, write to us at info, that's I-N-F-O, at org. Matt takes questions uh, during the show, and after the show, he'll look at the questions that go to info at org. And uh, I've let them stack up in these two weeks that I'm uh, sitting in for him. <laughs> only so, so, yeah, so he's going to have a stack of them, and uh, he'll field them pretty quickly. He can field them more quickly than I can. Um, uh, he's just wired that way, thank goodness. But, um, yeah, let's uh, find out more yeah. about this group. And it, yeah, that's, it, it may be well, a benefit. Yeah, and I'll be visiting you. Well, I'll be visiting Matt in Idaho in a few weeks. So when I go up and see him, you know, I'll uh, I'll send him. Uh, this is Alex from the Zoom Master Show. Oh, okay. Have we met at Matt's before? Yeah. No, no. We've only I've only been on the After Show a few times. From you know, oh, only the After Show. Florida. Okay. Yeah, only the After yes. Show. So I'll. So when I see him, no, I've never visit. I've never met him in person. We've only spoke. And so I'm going to go see him, and I'll tell him a little bit. I'll connect him with the pastor, and, and yeah, I think it would be good for him to get Yeah, if you have their website, and, and, and you can print out, yeah, if you can print out their statement of faith and their mission statement, something like that, he can examine it and, uh, and tell from there uh, how, um, how spot on they are. As a matter of fact, I recommend for people who want to know uh, more about CARM, the inner workings of CARM, our statement of faith is available online, the CARM statement of faith. It's rather uh, long because of the things we have to deal with uh, from so many different directions. We have to make it uh, very precise on uh, the certain doctrines that we um, touch in the statement of faith, but I think you'll find the precision uh, precision in the statement of faith worth going through. Uh, it's rather lengthy uh, text, um, so people can read that yeah. and hold us to it. They can hold us to it if we go off that statement of faith. Uh, we expect the body of Christ to let us know, and uh, and we appreciate that kind of feedback. We're we're open. To that kind of criticism, always. Yeah, yeah, and just for the listeners out there, I mean, CARM.org is a great resource. I mean, I, I I share that website. I shared it with the pastors in Costa Rica. I, I hear reports from people around the world because I travel a lot. So, I mean, it's a great resource because you know the cults aren't just in the West. You know, they're everywhere. They're all over the world. That's so, right. If you need any that's right, and on, many of Go to that website. Yeah, and that's uh, it. Does my heart good to hear you say that? Because many of the uh, uh, cults have a common thread flowing through them, and if you have to deal with one or the other or several at the same time, you're going to find whoa, 
uh, here's the same old lie. You can almost hear the hissing, you know, some of the groups that say you <laughs> can become a god. Yeah, you know, you can become a god yourself. I'm thinking, wow, that sounds like the snake in the Garden of Eden just hissing his way. But, uh, yeah, so you'll find uh, you'll find uh, karm. I, I'll tell you the truth. I've been with Matt over 40 years now as everything has developed into what it has. And I go into karma and get lost sometimes going from topic to topic and trying to pin down uh, things that uh, I've been asked or I know I'm going to deal with somebody in the near future. I'll get in there and I'll get into the topical uh, uh, list and sometimes uh, I'll end up saying, gee, I feel hungry. I skipped dinner. Oh, you know, I get so into it. So it's a valuable resource, and I hope people do take advantage of it. And thank you for your kind words about that. Uh, that's that's what we're here for, and we're blessed by that report. Thank you. Oh, you're you're welcome. Hey, do do I have time for one uh, quick question or more? Yes, there's no there's nobody else hanging on. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah. Have you heard of a guy named Sean Griffin? A false teacher who denies the Trinity? Well, I haven't heard of him specifically, but if he denies the Trinity, then he is indeed a false teacher. Uh, as far as Christianity goes, if he's call- claiming to be a Christian, we have uh, we have wonderful articles on karma. On how do we identify uh, false teachers? And a sister article to it, how do we identify false miracle workers? And uh, excuse me. And then there, uh, there's a one uh, another sister article that follows up. How do you protect your family against false teachers? All three of those series of articles are um, uh, a measuring stick by which you can use w- with your Bible open to test such guys as this. Uh, yeah, if he's claiming to be Christian and denies the Trinity, then he's outside the pale of orthodoxy as far as small o orthodoxy, um, the his- historic uh, Christian faith, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, don't yeah really... I asked that. Because, yeah, I've heard of him, and I was wondering if Matt had any had any interaction with him, because he's deceiving a lot of people. I mean... He sells a study guide for the uh, first Enoch, like, and basically, that's all I saw on his website was he sells that, and he, he it's hard to pin him down on his theology, and I've, I've had some friends who have had interactions with him, but he's very dangerous. So, I mean, if, if any, I mean, I'll just warn, he denies the Trinity, and if anyone out there is listening to him, you know, uh, I would be cautious, because... Uh, He's 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 getting some following online. Yeah, and, um, cautious is, yeah, is so, cautious is the word. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, okay. I'll have they, to ask Matt a little bit about him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, um, I'm not. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's uh, had uh, had some exposure to this guy in his ministry because Matt's pretty deep on that. But that's a good word, caution. We approach everything with caution with our Bibles open like the Bereans, and we check what we hear every day uh, to see whether or not it's so. And that's the noble-minded way, according to Paul, to approach uh, your Christian faith. Uh, uh, Dig your roots deep in the Word of God, and these fakers, uh, these pretenders, will have less of a chance of... uh, uh, deceiving you in uh, the net of false false teachings. Unfortunately, young Christians that aren't discerning or young in their faith may be influenced by the popularity of some of these false teachers. The, and the popularity is a trap. So anyway, but thanks for your call, and we're coming up on a break. Uh, join back okay, with us. I appreciate it, Charlie. Uh, it's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hello again. This is Charlie Spine sitting in for Matt Slick on Matt Slick Live. Uh, you can uh, visit Matt Slick's website, carm.org, C-A-R-M dot org, where you'll find uh, uh, answers to uh, many of the objections non-Christians have to the Christian faith, you'll find ways to witness to them the truth of God's Word. 
That's C-A-R-M dot org. And you'll find a lot of tools that'll help you and even bless you and ground you deeper in your Christian faith. Uh, so I invite you to visit CARM.org. Uh, our last caller mentioned something. He he had recently had a trip to Costa Rica and found that there were, it was thick with cults and cultic movements. Uh, this is uh, no surprise. Um, and let me uh, give out the phone number because we have open lines right now. If you want to call in and drive the topic, the number is toll-free, 877 877- Two zero seven two two seven six. But uh, is regarding his call, we have a, a ministry outreach. Uh, you might call it a, a, a satellite outreach of a sort. Um, it, several. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, gentleman in uh, uh, Colombia uh, who's uh, got the Spanish version of CARM. So if um, you're more uh, uh, familiar with uh, Spanish or it's your first language, or you have friends or family that speak Spanish uh, predominantly, you can send them to the Mia Peak, M-I-A-P-I-C dot org. And uh, Carlos there has uh, put together uh, many, many, many English translations, and he's a skillful uh, translator. He's he's got wonderful articles there of his own as well uh, that he um, works on in Colombia and the ministry outreach down there. Uh, that is uh, a, a sister organization to our CARM. Actually, it's part of CARM. We uh, try to support him when we can, and uh, he's a very valuable uh, asset to us. We have another uh, valuable asset in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, we have one, Dave Brito, and he has the Portuguese version of CARM and uh, plenty of other material that's sound and biblically-based material and the faith-building material. Uh, his organization is uh, Defenda of Faith. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, but um, my friend Ernie can post a link in, I believe, to the Portuguese uh, uh, website of the CARM.org. Uh, I'll tell you what, it, you go to Africa, and we've got several people in Africa that are using the CARM materials to witness to people there. There's a plenty of error running around in Africa, plenty of these false teachers, plenty of these uh, uh, fake apostles uh, who claim that they can have some authority over the people there in the church. And because they're well-funded and they're from the West. Some of the people there regard them as having uh, more credibility than the local outreaches, uh, which are uh, trying to reach uh, their fellow brethren with uh, accurate information. Well, sometimes people disregard it in favor of the information that they get from the big money Western uh, uh, organizations that aren't necessarily. Uh, uh, what you would call Christian sometimes. They are aberrant in their movements and teaching false doctrine of one sort or another, but um, they're running havoc. You know, in Nigeria, we have a wonderful uh, brother there. In Malawi, we have a wonderful brother there. And all these people um, benefit from your support uh, as you support CARM, which is easy to do if you have a mind to, and the Lord puts it on your heart. You can simply go to uh, the website. There'll be a donate button on the home page, uh, or you can go to. I'm looking for the link. I think it's carm.org/donate. Uh, I think it's as simple as that. Uh, but a surefire way is to get in from the uh, uh, website the portal. Uh, now we have another call online. And it is Chuck. Let me go over here and, uh-oh, if I could, my mouse is a naughty mouse. It's not behaving. Okay, here we go. Ah, uh, Chuck from North Carolina. Hi, Chuck. This is Charlie Spina. Hi, Charlie. This is Chuck. Uh, Hi. I just want to give you some information about uh, the Landmark Baptist Church 
the fellow was talking about B. H. Carroll, the author of Trail of Blood. That was okay. uh, what the Lamar Baptist used for tracing the history of their church back to John the Baptist. Now, okay. Well, they don't have any doctrines like denying the Trinity or, you know, the Jesus Christ, of course, that would be denying the Trinity and things like that. Uh, but, you know, baptism by immersion, you know, independent Baptist church is what they are, would be in the independent of Baptist course. church movement, but in, but in a place of their own, probably. Well, um, um, also, like I say, I don't know too much about them. I'm cautious about um, uh, about hearing right. reports about them that aren't um, supplied with documentation. I need, like I told the other caller, I need a, a copy of their statement of faith and their mission statement to more accurately assess uh, the direction they're going. You're right. Uh, yeah. But at, yeah, at this like, point... I... Go ahead. Go ahead, Charlie. Forgive me. No, I was going to say, since I'm uh, ignorant of that right now, and, it, it, you know, some people think ignorant is a pejorative term. No, it's not pejorative. It's no. just an honest opinion. Hey, I, I'm not informed. It means you don't and know. there's uh, no, yeah, not there's informed. no vice, uh, and it's not wrong to be ignorant. The thing that, that's wrong is to remain willingly ignorant. Now, that is a vice, <laughs> and I try to avoid <laughs> that, so... Uh, that's why I caution people and, and, and invite them to become more knowledgeable and studied what the people are putting out from their official publications and go from there uh, comparing it with the Word of God. But I hesitate uh, to comment uh, one way or the other until I have Very good. Uh, Very good information idea. in hand. Yeah, uh, Charlie, nope. I was calling, and this is what I believe, because of the acceptance of the homosexuality and the extremely bad way our education and system is going about exposing 10-year-old kids to all this filthy porn, I believe yep. God is taking his hands off of America. He may very well uh, be doing so. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the minds of some believers... believers. Yeah. Well, in the well, mind of, of many sorry. believers... We uh, in in our minds we wonder why he hasn't taken his hand off it earlier because of the atrocities that uh, is put up with in our society. Uh, it's not like um, it's not like we shouldn't expect these things to have come along because we it was predicted that these things would get worse and worse as we get nearer to the return oh, yeah. of Christ. But uh, it, it's a wonder it's a wonder he has blessed us and kept his hand uh, of wrath uh, off of us for this long, in my opinion, but we need to continue to walk with him and pray. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hi, welcome back to Matt Slick Live. This is Charlie Spine sitting in for Matt Slick, uh, here to take your calls with questions uh, about the cults, the occult, various religions around the world, uh, uh, questions about the Bible and the Christian faith. At the uh, toll-free number we have for you to call in is 877-207-2276. Uh, for those of you who uh, have been following us, or those who are new to CARM and the CARM ministry, uh, our homepage is C-A-R-M, Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, C-A-R-M dot org. And you can go there and, re and receive a lot of uh, helpful tools and more information about the ministry of CARM and Matt Slick Live. Uh, for the rest of, uh, of, well, actually, for everyone, uh, we've found that some of the uh, uh, social media platforms that we stream on are less than, uh, let's say, less than kind uh, to the message of the gospel, and they don't go out of their way to make things uh, easy for us. And in fact, sometimes uh, we've found that there's been some measure 
of uh, censorship uh, in our eyes. Uh, so we're moving a lot of our content uh, content now and trans transitioning to uh, Rumble. Uh, Rumble seems to be a, a, a form of a platform that is not uh, afraid to allow free expression uh, of ideas, and so in that uh, in that light, we think we're going to kind of stick with Rumble as we gradually move away from uh, Facebook and and uh, YouTube so much. Uh, we'll try to stay on there as much as we can, but uh, if it becomes uh, too much to be put up with, we'll just simply bail and go over to Rumble. So we invite you over to Rumble. That's probably where you're going to be best uh, able to contact us and interact with us uh, for the live shows and so forth. So uh, as I was talking to um, the last gentleman, um, yeah, we've we've got a lot of things going on in our society that God has uh, warned us of, and unfortunately, they seem to be opening up and and manifesting uh, more and more. Uh, some of it is uh, very difficult for us with uh, who have children and grandchildren, and in my case, great grandchildren. I dare not think of what the atmosphere is going to be like for them as they. Uh, uh, grow if the Lord tarries. Um, it's um, it's something that only the people of God can um, uh, influence those around them with the attractiveness of the gospel message, with the uh, the message of love that Jesus Christ has brought to the world. Uh, if we can uh, model that for the unsaved world around us. Uh, it may be the exact tool that God has meant for, uh, you to be uh, to bringing people into his kingdom. Uh, somehow, some way, uh, we know that this uh, happens at his will, not ours, but nevertheless, we're to try, we're to reach out to all men, because all men and women uh, reflect the image of God and they deserve a basic amount of respect. And part of respecting them as God image bearers, part of that respect is to give them the gospel, um, uh, every one of them, that every nation, uh, as the Great Commission says, go out and do that. So we want to follow that Great Commission uh, with the tools uh, God has given us, with the places and situation he puts us in, whether it's at work or is it a, it's a... A blessed mom at home with her kids. Uh, it, it's all it all uh, works to our advantage and to the advantage of advancing the kingdom of God as we work together to honor Him. Uh, there's no or there's no calls coming in right now, uh, but I do invite you to call toll free with your questions. Toll free to the number eight seven seven two zero seven two two seven six. Uh, also, if you've missed some of the programming uh, in the past, uh, thanks to the Truth Network, you can uh, see over 600 of the of Matt Slick Live uh, 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 podcasts recorded and archived there through the Truth Network. Uh, uh, it's it's amazing uh, the technology that uh, has made these things available. So uh, we just bless those there that uh, provide that service uh, for the. Christian community. Uh, I'm looking for a question to come in. So, if in absence of a question, I'll uh, pick my own topic. Okay, if you don't mind. And one of the topics um, that has presented itself uh, frequently is you run into someone who sounds good, sounds Christian seems Christian, uses Christian terminology, only to find out you're talking at cross-purposes. They're saying the word or the title, Jesus Christ. Okay, well, the scriptures warn us that many false Christs have gone out, okay, and even warns of, of a false Holy Spirit that, that we're on, to be on the lookout for. And a false gospel, and any other gospel that, but that which preached by the apostles, they've 
they've they've said it's anathema. It is uh, anathema is a uh, damnation from God Himself, and so it's the most uh, it's the strongest term one could use about these false uh, doctrine that goes out. Well, it goes out when these people are using Christian terms with their own particular definition behind those terms. And this is where the problem comes in, and we find ourselves at uh, uh, butting heads with, say, the Jehovah's Witness, who says the word Jehovah simply means the Father, and Jesus was his first and greatest creation. Well, we've butt heads there. Some of them even openly say that Jesus is Michael the Archangel. Well, what are we to say to these things? They're using the terms and names. Well, we can identify Michael the Archangel very quickly for what he is, an angel, a created being, in the little book of Jude, where it says, Michael was disputing over the body of Moses with the devil, okay, and dared not bring against the devil a railing accusation. Some translations said he dared not bring against him a blasphemous judgment. Uh, Well, wait a minute. Uh, Jesus can quite easily, quickly, and wouldn't hesitate in rebuking the devil uh, or judging him on the spot, but Michael the Archangel had to do something entirely Uh, right and correct and should be a model for us, he said to the devil, the Lord rebuke you. Okay? He had to invoke someone else, namely the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't battle with him personally. When I find people that are rebuking the devil on their own, uh, they might be well-meaning, but uh, it's, that's playing with fire. Invoke the name of Jesus. Invoke the authority of God and say, you know what? If if this is a demonic oppression or whatever, the Lord rebuke it, okay? Even Michael the archangel, a mighty archangel, uh, knew better than to uh, uh, bring a judgment against uh the devil, as he uh, contended with him. So that's a lesson. Uh, So he's not, Jesus is not Michael the Archangel. That's all there is to it. Also, uh, you will find easily in Scripture that Jesus is given credit for having created everything. Well, the Father's called creator too. And in uh, Job, especially, you'll find the Holy Spirit giving, uh, given credit for creation. Well, how is that? Well, as the guy mentioned uh, just a little while ago, there's a a certain church that denies the Trinity. But it makes sense to us as uh, believers in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are the one God. Uh, It makes sense to us that all could be given credit, and they give credit back and forth to each other for what they've done and produced for us. So a denial of the Trinity— is something that some people do misunderstanding what the Trinity is. They'll say it's a, a form of three gods or tritheism, or, you know, they'll come up with things, and no, if you give it a proper representation, there is only one God, and we have the Father called God, the Son called God, and Jesus is called God, the Son of God, and God. Uh, they all share whatever deity is. Okay, they share that nature of deity, unlike uh, us, who are the creation. So be careful when you're dealing with people who sound Christian. And uh, if no one calls in, I'll give you some more uh, comparisons that might be shocking to you uh, from different uh, faith uh, circles that are not consistent with the Christian faith that uh, may uh, may be surprising to you. Uh, and give you pause and uh, and give you a heads up on some of the things to look It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hello again. Welcome back to Matt Slick Live. This is Charlie Spine sitting in for Matt Slick while he's on a trip to the Holy Land with some other Christians. Uh, today's March 2nd. Uh, 2023, Thursday, 
and I expect him uh, to come be coming back and returning to the show this coming Monday. So if you uh, uh, have something that you in particular want to ask him, he'll be back here then. Until then, uh, you can call in with your questions, and I'll try to field them my best uh, as I can from the Word of God. Uh, you can call toll-free at 877 207 Two two seven six. That's eight seven seven two zero seven two two seven six. And we'd be glad to uh, answer your question. Uh, I was talking uh, just uh, before the break about uh, uh, movements that use Christian language. Uh, one in particular uh, I mentioned was Jehovah's Witnesses. Another popular. Um, uh, group of people you'll run into are the LDS or the Mormon Church. Uh, They define Jesus as uh, the literally first begotten son to Elohim, a a, uh, glorified man from another planet near a star named Kolob, and his wife, the mother God, we don't have her name in LDS, they don't give it, uh, but they literally uh, give birth, she gives birth to spirit babies. And the first one uh, in line uh, was Jesus, uh, and following him, his brother, the devil, uh, Satan, who became Lucifer. Uh, so these so called spirit brothers in heaven come to earth, and all of a sudden you're thinking, what is this? Uh, Jesus is not the spirit brother of Lucifer. No way. He's his creator. He commanded him. He rebuked him. He threw him out of people. Uh, this is this is not right. What is this about a father and a mother God uh, coming from a planet near a star named Kolob? It, well, it's in the it's in the official works of the LDS Church, Doctrines and Covenants. You'll find this. Uh, they believe it's inspired scripture. Yes, indeed. They'll they'll. Uh, go to battle on the fact that, yeah, that's where God comes from. And he had a God before him uh, that he worshipped. And he was once a man with body, parts, and passions, just like you and me. Well, wait a minute. If he was once like me, at any point, I can tell you he's not worth worshipping. Huh? And I dare say if he was like you, he's not worth worshipping either. No, no, no. The God of Christianity is not this concept. The God of Christianity is the creator of all. He's eternal creator. He has, uh, he claims to be one and only one. And in scripture, he says, not only is he the only God, he knows of no other. So I'm sorry to say, if the LDS want to claim that there is and, and, and uh, indicate or hint that our God that knows no other is, is somehow ignorant or dumb. Uh, you, you've got a whole tangled web here. No, no, our God knows who he is. He knows he's the only one. He says, before me there was no God, neither shall there be after me. And that should settle it for the Christian, and it should inform the LDS that they're way off base. Uh, in fact, uh, we have a, another caller on the air, and I think their question has to do with the LDS. So let me get to Apollo. Uh, Apollo, are are you there? Yep, I'm here. Hi, Apollo. Hey, how are you doing today? Wonderful, thank you. You have a question about the LDS? Yep, I sure do. It's uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that that's actually what you started diving into uh, as I was calling. So uh, they they believe that, you know, God and Jesus Christ are two different people. Uh, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. So are, are they are they worshiping a different uh, God just because God is God is Jesus Christ. There's no two. There's not there's not God and then Jesus Christ. Um, it, exactly. It their, really, their confusion. Yeah, their confusion is exactly as you say. They think they're two different people, and we understand people to to be what people are, 
And when, in fact, to be more precise, Jesus and God the Father are two different persons. Persons is an altogether different distinction, okay? A person is not like, uh, doesn't necessarily have to be like us, uh, a tangible, uh, physical being. Uh, God in the flesh is uh, Jesus, when he incarnated, became tangible in that sense, and that that's why we call him uh, the God-man. In the hypostatic union, he's fully God and fully man. He never gives up his deity but while re- remaining uh, also humanity. Uh, so persons are simply cognizant, reflective egos. They know of themselves. They know that there's another outside themselves or opposed to themselves, and they know how to uh, relate in such a way, the Holy Spirit is is somehow uh, given uh, a, a short uh, uh, some uh, short attention, but the Holy Spirit too is a person. Uh, we know that because he can be lied to, he can be grieved, he can be quenched. Uh, you can't lie and and grieve some force of God. You can only lie to a person. So yeah, they can they confuse persons with people. Uh, just for the example, if, you give them you the, the idea of I, Lucifer. Yeah, Lucifer if is you don't mind is they'll let, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry. If you don't mind, could I follow it up with uh, an, another question on the same exact topic? So how okay. exactly would would you try to get through to these uh the these these folk uh because uh they're they're clearly heavily indoctrinated from a young age um how, how would you go about exactly trying to explain to them that Jesus Christ is is God in the flesh he came down you know he is the perfect lamb there's none perfect but god it, it, it it's yeah. It's been because they what they want to try to do is indoctrinate you. But how would you get through to them? That's my question. Well, first, uh, the first and most effective way I found when I first dealt with the LDS is that my wife and her girlfriend cooked the missionaries some cherry pies and brought them over and delivered them to them. So they got the idea right away that we didn't hate them. Uh, and she could do that like no other person, certainly not like I could. Um, but to, to be serious, what what we found, and this may shock some people, is I studied as, as deeply as I could the Book of Mormon and found in the Book of Mormon things that were contrary to what they teach, and also which were uh, in uh, in line with historic sound Christianity that opposed what they teach. You won't find their pet doctrines uh, in the Book of Mormon. You really won't, because it was most likely written by a guy named Solomon Spaulding near Palmyra, New York, where I used to live. And Solomon Spaulding had a relationship with a printer there where Oliver Cowdery worked. And Oliver Cowdery was one of Joseph Smith's first witnesses to the Book of Mormon. Uh, This man uh, uh, used to, um, uh, let's see, uh, he used to write uh, religious adventure novels. They had a religious theme to them. Uh, And he used to entertain his family. Solomon Spaulding uh, was known for this kind of stuff. But after he passed away, and I think he passed away over in Pennsylvania, uh, and the 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 bulk of the uh, text of the Book of Mormon remained with this printer uh, near Palmyra, New York. Uh, somehow, I think Joseph and uh, Oliver got a hold of it and and used it to um, form uh, a new uh, religious uh, view. And they warped it, and it m- uh, morphed and evolved as they went. And you can show from their own materials how it evolved. So sometimes I'll I'll go to their materials directly. I'll uh, I'll go to a, uh, a a couplet that was made by uh, one of the presidents of their church called Lorenzo Snow. He said, and it and it's something they repeat even to this day. Uh, as God, or as man is, God once was, and as God is, man may become. And that's a famous couplet within the LDS Church. 
they do indeed believe that their God, the Father, was once a man, and that you, if you obey the laws and ordinances and commands of the LDS Church, may become a God yourself and exalted into de- uh, deity. So their um, their own material is something I find best to use with them because they don't have a uh, suspicion uh, that you're making this thing up. Uh, Matt's, uh, Matt Slick's website, CARM, has wonderful documentation from LDS sources, and I often give uh, the uh, link to the official LDS archives so that the LDS I talk to can check me out and see that I'm not making it up. In the old days before the Internet, I used to have uh, all kinds of photocopies I'd have to carry around with me to show them, no, you probably got this book in your library at home. Here's the title page of it, and here's the page I'm quoting from. Go check it yourself. Make sure I'm not taking it out of context or misquoting it. Uh, we would have to challenge them in that sense. Now the challenge is much more streamlined uh, with the advent of the Internet, and they can have access to these works where uh, Brigham Young stood in the temple at Salt Lake, and he says, I'm going to reveal something to you that was revealed to me by God. So in other words, he's standing in the pulpit in the church there in, in, in Salt Lake City. He says, and this is what God revealed to me, and I'm revealing to you that Adam is our Father and our God and the only God with whom we have to do. Well, he called it a doctrine revealed to him by God. LDS will say, no, that was the Adam-God theory. Well, wait a minute. Brigham Young would slap you if you tried to insist that upon him. He said, no, this is doctrine that came from me from God, and I'm revealing it to you. And according to the LDS belief, when their prophet is standing in that pulpit in uh, Salt Lake, that he can't be deceived or misguided uh, by evil, that he's given it authoritatively. Uh, Adam God? He's our our Father and our God and the only God with whom we have to do? Well, that would get you kicked out of the LDS Church today if you tried to make them swallow that. The, the, it's morphed, it's evolved, it's inconsistent, it's in some places silly and ludicrous, in other places, it's uh, uh, deadly to the eternal, uh, uh, the eternal state of people's souls who go in uh, understanding this and fully accepting it. Um, there's other LDS, and uh, you, you don't want to count this out. There's other LDS people that are grown up in our cultural LDS and don't know the, uh, the the real deeper teachings. But the ones that do are going to be. I have no excuse in front of the, uh, in front of God when it comes time to say, "Look, no, you you had it wrong. You got it wrong." And Charlie Spine and Carm told you where to go to see it and prove it, and you didn't do it. And uh, I just don't want to be in their shoes. But hopefully, you guys can. That's a good question. Call back again tomorrow. Another program powered by the Truth Network. <laughs>